The 16th century gave us some beautiful portraits, some very famous and some very disturbing. As always, the subjects for these portraits would range from the artists themselves, wealthy patrons, or one of the few rulers at the time. Giuseppe Archimboldo painted the latter, being the court painter of both Maximilian II and his son, Rudolf II. But Archimboldo had an amazingly original style which both brought him success during his lifetime, but also got him dismissed for not making serious art until very recently. To introduce you to his peculiar style, I want to show you fruit basket and portrait with vegetables. Don't be fooled by these seemingly normal still life paintings. These are anything but average. Flip them upside down and they become portraits. Archimboldo would create many portraits in this style with different objects to depict the likeness of his subjects. For example, the librarian, painted in 1562, depicts a member of the emperor's entourage with the objects that make up his profession. For example, the body is made out of books, his fingers out of bookmarks, and his beard out of dusters. The waiter, made 12 years later, is made out of kegs, spouts, and vases. But Archimboldo wouldn't only paint portraits of people or professions, but he'd also make portraits of abstract ideas. He made a series of four portraits depicting the four different elements, water, earth, fire, and air. But unlike other portraits by Archimboldo, his four elements use animals to compose the paintings. Sea creatures are used to depict water, land mammals depict earth, and birds depict air. However, fire isn't composed of animals and this one exception is extremely meaningful. In a very beautiful way, Archimboldo isn't only using fire, guns, and jewelry to symbolize fire, but also to symbolize humanity. What other species masters fire as expertly as we do? What other species uses fire to forge jewelry? And what other species uses combustion as a weapon? Analogous to the four elements, the four seasons also represent four concepts using corresponding objects, in this case, plants, flowers, fruits, and vegetables. And this brings us to the final portrait I want to talk about, the one I really want to focus on, Archimboldo's 1591 Vertumnus. Vertumnus is the Roman god of seasons, change, and plant growth. Like the seasons and plants, Vertumnus had the ability to transform himself into whatever he wanted. He famously did it to seduce Pomona in Ovid's Metamorphoses. This painting is great at depicting two of Vertumnus's characteristics, the fact that he's the god of seasons and plants, as well as his ability to shapeshift. However, this isn't only a portrait of a Roman god, but it's also a portrait of the Holy Roman Emperor, Rudolf II. Rudolf II, aside from being one of the most powerful men in Europe, was a patron of both the arts and sciences. He was an intellectual who, to many, helped the creation of the scientific revolution. He was a true Renaissance man who tried to uncover the mysteries of the universe through, notoriously, alchemy. And astronomy. The portrait of Rudolf II as Vertumnus could mean many things. It could symbolize wealth, showcasing the exotic flowers and fruits only the Holy German Emperor and a handful of Europeans could have access to. But this could also symbolize power, showing how this emperor's power extends to nature itself. He's a ruler of man, but also a ruler over nature, bringing to Prague exotic fruits and vegetables from the East and from the New World. This could also be a symbol of Rudolf's scientific mind, trying to find unity in a seemingly chaotic universe, trying to find patterns in order to understand. What at first glance looks like a collection of random vegetables, fruits, and flowers becomes intelligible if we just pause to look at the greater picture. 
It's great to categorize, classify, and archive nature, but it's equally as important to analyze the data and interpret it. Finally, and this is my own interpretation, the first thing that came to my mind when seeing this portrait of a ruler as a collection of vegetables was change. Every ruler, king, queen, holy emperor, president, or prime minister are fleeting. No matter how powerful they are, they can't defeat death. None of them are immortal. If Rudolf II was actually made out of fruits, he would decay in a week. But of course, he's actually made out of flesh, but that doesn't change much except for the rate at which he decays. Rudolf II and Giuseppe Archimboldo probably didn't see this portrait as a testament to the emperor's mortality, and maybe you don't. But what makes this painting powerful to me is its depiction of the impermanence of power which, just like the change of seasons, is inevitable. I hope you enjoyed the video, thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing and liking if you have already, and I'd like to thank you Design I Write and every other patron for the support. If you also want to support and if you want to get this 6x9 postcard print, this is the one I sent in January, check out patreon.com forward slash the canvas.